The Lakers pick their playoff poison, and that toxin is a mile above sea level. A Trevor Bauer accuser gets indicted for fraud. No, not that one, one of the others. And Blake Griffin hangs up his sneakers 15 years after hanging his groin on Timothy Mozgov's face. Good morning, I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is Faithful Angelino's Morning Report. So it is April 17th, 2024. We've added a new subscriber to the Angelino Familia. Thank you for getting in on the ground floor. We're gonna do our best to keep you informed here at the Sanctum Sanctorum of LA Sports. Now, if you like being in the know about LA, click, click the like button, click, click the subscribe button. There's a notification bell, hit that. It'll let you know we drop new content. Sharing is caring, let people know exist, and by all means, comment, you know this. I look forward to hearing from you guys. Now, before we go through the news and notes, a look at the scoreboard. Mookie Betts tied his career high last night with five hits. He also drove in two runs. Dodgers six, Washington two. Betts is the NL batting average leader right now. He's hitting 388. Ryan Yarbrough got the win in a so-called bullpen game. Meanwhile, LeBron James scored 23 points, D'Angelo Russell added 21, and the Lakers have secured the seventh seed in the playoff bracket with a 110-106 victory over New Orleans in the play-in tournament. They have a date with Denver. Game one is Saturday evening, and we're gonna talk a little more about that in just a moment. Meanwhile, today, Washington is going to play the Dodgers again at noon. Today is actually apparently going to be London Knack's Major League debut. Originally, it was reported it was going to be yesterday. Jake Irvin is 0-1 with a 4.24 ERA. Now, as for the news, there are a number of reasons that I wish the Lakers had a different matchup in the playoffs than what they have right now. The primary one is because last season I discovered a deep hatred for Nuggets coach Mike Malone. Despite having won the NBA championship, which I didn't have a problem with, I didn't. The dude could not stop trolling the Lakers for months. He could not get over that his team didn't, not that they won a title. No, 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 no. He could not stop talking about the Lakers. The Lakers were like, okay, we lost. Go ahead. Go on. Win your title. But Malone couldn't leave well enough alone. He is a pointlessly small-minded man. If you're a Laker hater and you claim that your team has more class than the Lakers then feel free to show some class in the first place. Could you do that? Could you accomplish that little thing? Now, the reality of the situation, though, is that the Lakers are going to be heavy underdogs against the Nuggets, which is why some people actually suggested that the Lakers should tank the play-in game that they were in yesterday, because that way, if they advance to face the winner of Sacramento versus Golden State, getting into the playoffs, you go against Oklahoma City, and that's a little more palatable. Now, Darvin Ham absolutely did not like that uh, assertion at all, and he just blasted anybody who believed in that yesterday, which I understand him doing. I do understand him being upset that people said the Lakers should have lost last night to try to sneak in and play Oklahoma City. But what Coach Ham needs to understand is you lost to the Nuggets eight consecutive times. And you're starting to wonder if there's any ideas that the Lakers coach can come up with to change that around. The Lakers looked a little skittish in the last week. They damn near lost to Memphis, and they almost coughed up. Well, they did cough up. They almost lost after building an 18-point lead last night. That's one reason. The second reason, as I mentioned, Denver has won eight consecutive games against the Lakers. The Nuggets have a deadly two-man game in Nikola Jocic and Jamal Murray that LA could not limit at all, particularly in the fourth quarter of last year's playoff sweep. So right now, your guess is as good as mine as to how the Lakers pull off the upset. Uh, for example, 
They signed Gabe Vincent last offseason, specifically because Vincent was able to D up decently against Jamal Murray. But Vincent has been hurt most of the year. They tried multiple different defensive matchups against the Joker, and they got burned. It's simply not a good matchup for the Lakers. Straight and simple. If you have an idea, feel free to find Darvin Ham's email address. One of former Dodger pitcher Trevor Bauer's accusers was indicted in a fraud case, a fraud case that did involve the former Cy Young Award winner. So no, it's the, but not that one in Southern California. It's the one in Arizona. If you recall, when Bauer's reputation was getting shredded like government documents, part of the agreement from the uh, gaggle punditry, you know, everybody on ESPN, those talk shows, everybody on the Fox Sports 1 talk shows, the LA Times, they were putting forth the argument that, well, you know, there are just so many accusers, so it doesn't really matter if Bauer says he's innocent. There are just so many accusers. One of them, at least, has to be right. And besides that, we were told to believe all women. Basically, what they tried to do is they tried to paint Trevor Bauer as the Bill Cosby of Major League Baseball, and not for his contributions to wholesome family television, either. So... And I want to preface this by saying that I never said Bauer was innocent and I never said Bauer was guilty because I wanted all the facts to come out. Darcy Adanya Esamonu was indicted by a grand jury yesterday on charges of fraud and theft by extortion. By the way, as a former reporter, let me tell you, anytime the press uses your middle name, your life is effed. Straight up. She claimed, she originally claimed, Bauer choked her unconscious, raped her, got her pregnant. <sighs> Who's ready for the other side of the story? Bauer said that the woman demanded 3.6 million, pretty precise I must say, 3.6 million, and when he refused, that she went to the cops, and the cops checked out her claims. Only there is nothing in her medical history that validates she was Prego at the time that she was hooking up with Bauer. No Prego, no Abordo. Bauer ended up paying 8761 for the expenses related to her, quote, alleged pregnancy and its subsequent termination, according to a lawsuit he filed. But again, that means he is saying he paid for a non-existent abortion. And this was before Arizona looked up their 100 plus year old law that banned abortion in the state in the first place. No prego, no abordo. No abordo, no dinero. So the fraud case developed out of that. Now, by my count, that makes two of the four women who have accused Bauer, two of the four have had their cases, their claims, set ablaze. I'm not saying the other two are lying as well. I'm not. But I'm glad I did not join the Let's, Let's Hate Bauer Brigade when the accusations first broke. Because in my, in my eyes, dude is starting to look like a victim here. Dude is starting to look like the victim. I'm not saying he's innocent with everything. Dude is starting to look like a victim. And if I'm the commissioner, I'm hoping I don't get sued for denying an innocent man, a potentially innocent man, I should say, of his career. Now, as for the current Dodgers, you look at that lineup, and let's be real, it's more top-heavy than Sidney Sweeney. Going into last night's game, the seven through nine spots have a combined hit in just 162. Chris Taylor's off to a one for 33 start. He struck out 17 times. P.U. Kike Hernandez did not have an extra base hit until last night. So lengthening the lineup is an immediate need. 
So they called up Andy Pajes, who hit 371 with five home runs in just 15 games at Oklahoma City. Considering that Jason Hayward has a lingering back issue, Pajes is probably going to get an audition of maybe two weeks, possibly more. As a result, Taylor Trammell designated for assignment. It seemed poetically just that Carl Erskine, not only a Dodgers legend, but one of Jackie Robinson's closest teammates, died Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday was like one day after Jackie Robinson Day in MLB, so he got to see that one more time. He died at 97. Now, Erskine, in his own career, was a standout. The guy threw two no-hitters. The guy was part of the only Brooklyn Dodgers World Championship team. He's considered the last surviving member of the so-called Boys of Summer, for Pete's sakes. He also pitched the first Dodgers game in Los Angeles at the Coliseum. But more than what he accomplished in his baseball career, because he retired pretty young, he was like 32, he was an ally to Robinson and later became an advocate for children with special needs, including a long-time involvement with Special Olympics. So if you want to talk about having a life well-lived, that was it. Blake Griffin, one of the many fine players who committed career suicide by devoting much of his time to the Clippers, has retired from the NBA after 14 seasons. Uh, Griffin joins players that you would have thought have, would have won multiple titles. If only they didn't have to play for Donald Sterling, right? Danny Manning, Elton Brand comes to mind. Maybe you could conclude, Chris Paul, because the NBA was so hyped to finally make the Clippers a winner that they killed a Chris Paul trade to the Lakers so that Griffin would have a better chance at a title. Lob City, remember that? Now, together, the two comp compiled a, a, a highlight reel, just electrifying feats of high-flying basketball. Timothy Mozgov is still trying to have the imprint of Griffin's privates removed from his face after Griffin dumped on him back in 2010. Feel free to look it up if you have never seen that dunk on YouTube. It was the type of slam that would require the guy who got slammed on to need years of therapy. I was emotionally scarred and I wasn't even in the arena. That's how nasty it was. Dude basically dragged his nether regions. He, he jumped so high, grabbed Mozgov by the skull, and dragged his nether regions over Mozgov's face while he dunked. Brutal. Animalistic. Now, I'm not saying Griffin was a bad guy, mind you. Not at all. I have no reason to believe he was a bad dude. He was a five-time All-Star. He won a slam dunk title by dunking over a parked car. But the Clippers never even reached the conference finals with him. Because that's Clippering, unfortunately, for Clipper fans. As for the here and now, the Clippers are saying that they are not sure if Kawhi Leonard will play in game one of their series in, uh, against Dallas on Saturday. Leonard has been practicing, which leads you to believe he's going to play. He just has not played since March 31st with knee swelling. Eric Daly Jr. became the third player to transfer to UCLA basketball, coming from Oklahoma State, where he came off the bench and was highly effective as a sixth man with more than nine points per game with almost five rebounds per game. The LA Times immediately started hyping the guy as a starter, which I don't have a problem with because the Bruins were really thin at forward last year. If I were to guess at the UCLA lineup now, though, you could say there's uh, going to be transfer Sky Clark in the backcourt, probably with Dylan Andrews. Daly with maybe Lazar Stefanovic at the forward. And if not Stefanovic, then it's going to be transfer Kobe Johnson. The other would come off the bench, obviously. But that leaves an abyss at center if a day Mara cannot step up to replace Adam Bona, who declared for the NBA draft. Overall, the Bruins have landed three of the top 100 players that the Athletic ranked in the transfer portal. So credit to Mick Cronin for what he's added. 
Absolutely. The Bruins right now look a lot better than they did at any point last season. But unless Cronin plans on going small ball, he's going to need a center. Major League Soccer has apparently adopted three rule changes that will take effect this weekend, which is odd. But it's not quite as odd as one of the rules, which is going to say how VAR decisions that you don't just look at a screen and point or whatever. You're going to announce to the fans inside the stadium what you saw on the screen. Kind of like how the NFL referees announced their instant replay decisions. And it's still a bad idea. Here's why. Go back to El Trafico two weeks ago when LAFC was awarded a penalty that even referee managers, even the people who hired this referee said, yeah, that guy screwed up. That was a terrible call. The problem with VAR in the United States is that unlike the NFL, the screen to view the replays is right next to the home team's fans. And you don't think that they're yelling a whole bunch of stuff at the ref to try to intimidate them? You don't? The ideal solution, in my opinion, is to have VAR determined off-site, like in European soccer leagues, like in the NBA, for that matter, where the ref talks it out with, uh, with people in, a, in a, an off-site, off-arena off, uh, facility. If the referee wants to announce what the off-site crew decided, I'm cool with that. But if anything from El Trafico proved to us, that decision needs to be taken out of the referee's hands, particularly if he's going to be berated by fans of whatever the home team is. Former USC forward Arrington Page will transfer to Cincinnati. He saw only about 11 minutes per game with the Trojans last year, barely averaged three points per game. Happy trails, bruh. And the Kings have sent forward Akil Thomas back to Ontario. They have recalled Alex Turcott with one game left in the regular season that will be played on Thursday. But you let me know what you think of the comments thread. Talk to me about the Lakers' chances against the Nuggets. Do you actually believe Trevor Bauer now might be an innocent man? And if you enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We are talking LA sports here every single day. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Porta El Queso production. Take care.